What do you think is going to happen this weekend? The market feels a little jittery going into the next couple of days. People are de-risking maybe going into this weekend. How do you view what is happening right now? Do you think you're going to be getting a weekend this weekend? Um, like one, thank you. But I, I think people are just nervous. And, you know, what ends up happening is everybody just keeps looking at what's happening. Um, you sort of see the news on Deutsche. So people will be a little bit more nervous going into the weekend. Um, really what's happening is people are trying to figure out should they keep their money in sort of banks like First Republic or should they keep moving their money into banks like Citi, J.P. Morgan, mm -hmm. Bank of America. And that's sort of what's happening. And, you know, that's going to take a process. And the question is, you know, is, is everybody going to settle down or are people just over time going to be moving their money into the big banks? Mark, what do you think that they should be doing? What do I think you should be doing? Yeah, I mean, like, sh should we be moving money out of deposits and putting in money markets and getting 5%? Should I just, sh sh it, it, should we be looking at potentially universal deposit guarantee? Like, what, what do you think we should be doing? Well, if you look at it, what is the benefit of keeping your money in sort of a smaller bank? Even if that bank is doing extremely well, um, it's not one of the banks that, in essence, the Fed worries about systemic risk. So even if there's a 1% probability, why wouldn't you move your money into sort of JP Morgan or B of A into the banks where you know um, that if there's a problem, the Fed has to step in? So ultimately, all of this is a question of trust and sort of confidence. And, you know, the Fed is trying to give everybody back that confidence. Yeah. But if you're a business and you've got 100 million or 200 million in, you know, in a small bank, um, should you move it? And I think ultimately people will end up doing that unless the Fed gives people guarantees that they've got nothing to worry about. So, Mark, what you're saying is that um, unless the Fed does do that, unless the authorities do step in and provide guarantees, the regional banking system is unstable at this point. It's not that it's unstable. It's just that the question is the risk of keeping your capital there, even if it's a 1% probability, should you move it? And that's really yeah, but, the question. But Mark, if, if, if the answer to that is yes, then the next logical conclusion is that these banks have a problem because we are going to continue to see deposit flights and, and they are going to have an issue w with their depositors just on an ongoing basis continuing to leave their business. So I'm wondering where that ultimately takes us. I think, I think you're going to start seeing the numbers and, in essence, over the course of next month, if you're going to start seeing that deposits are moving out, then the Fed will have to step in. If you see that deposits have stabilized, um, then the Fed has done their job and given the confidence back. Mm -hmm. um, all, all I'm saying is if I'm the CEO of a company um, and there's a 1% probability, what do you think you should do? Ultimately, I think people will end up moving their capital out. Mark, you're many things, but you're also a distressed debt guy. When you take a look at the system, where are the opportunities and where is the trap? Oh, the, the opportunities for what we do right now is immense. And I think it's for anybody who does private credit. And the simple reason for that is <clears throat> it's going to be more difficult and it's harder for banks now going forward to lend capital. Or even if they lend money, um, they're going to require different covenants. It's just going to be harder. So for folks like me, um, you're going to be able to step in. You're going to be able to lend money. Um, it's just it's going to be sort of a golden age for us because we're going to be able to come in and the banking system, in my opinion right now, going forward, um, there's just going to be more requirements. There'll either be more equity requirements. Um, banks are going to be more careful. The Fed is going to supervise more. So all that means is that it's going to be harder to lend. And for folks like me, it's going to be easier to come yeah. in or to dictate terms. Net-net. 
Mark, what you're talking about is a tightening of lending standards. Um, and I'm wondering what kind of a default rate ultimately we're going to see off that, see, see coming off that. The banks are going to be more cautious. They're going to tighten up on who they lend to. You're going to, you're going to be lending, but probably at higher rates going forward. That's a tightening of lending standards. Does that imply a, a, a significant step up in the default rate? It implies that the default rate should move up. How much, I don't know. Um, the economy is still doing well. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, if you're not going to be able to borrow, um, it's going to have an effect on businesses. And therefore, you're going to have more issues. Mark, we were talking to Bruce Richards um, earlier this week, and he echoed something very similar. He definitely said the golden age of credit. He was talking about 10% uh, default rates. He was looking at uh, some bank assets because banks are going to need funding. Going to the government is going to cost a lot, so they're going to have to at some point offload assets. Uh, he really didn't like things like commercial real estate. Can you dig in a little bit as to the landscape? Well, the reason he doesn't like commercial real estate, and I don't want to speak for Bruce, um, but I would say to you right now on sort of loans, just look at New York City, um, you had a number of buildings and where people ended up borrowing having a fixed rate mortgage two or three years ago at 2% or 3% or 4%, whatever the number is. Today, if that loan came due, you're not, you're not going to be able to lend at that same level. So it's going to come due and you're going to pay somewhere around 7 8%. Um, so the cost of capital for everybody is going up. That's going to create issues. Whether it ends up being a 10% default rate, I don't know. But it's definitely going to be a much higher default rate. Um, or banks are going to have to end up just rolling over those loans. But there's going to be issues and stress within the system over the course of the next couple of years because of that. Mark, to, to, just to go back to, to the conversation we were having with Bruce, he was actively talking to banks. He was actively having conversations with people right now. He says there's probably a bigger opportunity further down the road, but those conversations are starting. Who are you talking to right now? Are you talking to the banks about buying assets? Which conversations are you having and with whom? Um, well, we're definitely having conversations. <clears throat> but I agree with Bruce. It's a bit early because banks mm -hmm. today don't want to take the reserves or don't want to take the losses. So I think what you're going to find is as the Fed comes in and forces banks to take reserves, that's when the opportunities come. Um, it's not today. It's going to be over the course of the next three months, six months, a year, when banks have to take reserves. So really what we're doing, and I assume what Bruce is doing, and folks like me are doing, is having the conversations, getting yourself in position, because there's going to be a huge amount of paper over the course of next year that we can all buy. All right, Mark, let's talk about your other venture, sports, talking about the Bucks. Um, if the Bucks win again this year, and it looks like they very much could, um, does the value increase and by how much? And like, how does that help you sell it? Um, I, I think whenever you win, um, more people would like to own a team. So I, I think right now what I'm really focused on is for us um, to end up finishing out the season. I think right now we're number one. Um, we're about two and a half games up. So if we can continue and just become the number one seed, um, that's going to help us. It'll help the value of the team. But more important, it'll help the team win another championship. Mark, do you think we are, though, getting to the near-term peak in terms of sports franchise valuations. I, to, to, to conflate these two conversations, it sounds like we're going into a period of stress. We have seen sports franchises valuations go up significantly over the last few years. Are you, are you selling at the top here, do you think? No, I think going forward, you're still going to find valuations moving up. Um, it's just not correlated. Um, I think ultimately, at the end of the day, um, it's the only thing you can watch live. So I think it's something that's pretty unique and people still love sports. Mm -hmm. So they'll love it. I think it's, it's still, you know, one of the things I want to continue investing in. And it's probably one of the reasons we're going to end up doing a sports fund so that we can continue investing in this asset class. What do you like, Mark, in the sports world? What are you looking at? It's a lot of things I like. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I ended up investing in pickleball and, <laughs> trying to do Fidel. Um, there's just, when you look around, I think you're just going to see a massive amount of growth in the industry. 
Uh, pickleball, man. I, I, I got to figure that one out. Um, before we let you go, um, let's talk about Bitcoin for a second. I know you've invested in Bitcoin personally. You're invested in crypto firms like Block Tower Capital. Where are you right now? Where are your investments sit in the crypto world? Um, you know, I'm pretty comfortable with the positions I have. Um, I'm not adding right now. Um, I made my investments. I'll see what happens over the course of the next year. I think right now there's far, far more opportunities in what I do day to day, which is on the lending space mm -hmm. and on the private credit. So that's where my focus is right now. And pickleball. Um, hey, Mark, it's, <laughs> it's been a really long time. It's really great to chat with you. Thanks a lot. Definitely Mark, come Mark. back, Mark Lazary.